Howdy Leadership Scholars. Welcome to the last lecture. Woo! So um, looking at the syllabus, um, I know that we've kind of split evaluation, not evaluation, goodness, that's what we're talking about, adjourning into some different kind of subcategories. But you know what? You guys have worked really hard. It's been a long session and it's a short week. So let's do a truncated version of the lecture. Um, the readings are there so you can always add and supplement what we talk about, like always, in your final paper or portfolio or folder or whatever it's going to look like for you. Okay. So we are at a journey. If you remember way back to like the second lecture and we talked about Tuckman uh, ad nauseum, a journey is this last stage. It is the stage that we don't do very often, forming and adjourning. We do not bookend our team experiences very well. So how do you do this? How are you successful at a journey? So just a quick reminder, what is a journey? It's evaluation of the task or the product. So did we reach our goals? How did we reach our goals? Um, what were the steps that we did, we took that were very task oriented? It's also analyzing the process. How did the process go? Did we get stuck in norming, right? Was group think something that we fell prey to? Did we get stuck in storming where there was just conflict that wasn't mitigated? Um, or, you know, did we rock it? But part of that process is that AAR, which is an after action review. So looking at the process, what did we do well? What did we do not so well? What would we do different in the future? And you celebrate the accomplishment. You get that closure. You say, we did it. Did it go all the way to plan? Probably not. Did we have some problems and some crises? Yep, but we worked through them together. So you celebrate that so that you can move on to your next project without any lingering holdovers from the project that you did. So we talk about evaluation and analysis. Now, this is probably going to be a review for some of you. Maybe uh, evaluation is your bag. Uh, you've taken all the classes with our evaluation specialists that we have here in our department or maybe in your department. Evaluation is a big deal. Um, every federal grant that you apply for has an evaluation component, so it's really important. I'm spending like a slide on it, so or half a slide. Um, so it's much more complicated than what I'm trying to say, but at least if you got these basics down. So there's formative and summative evaluation. So formative is actually something you do along the way. So it's check-ins, right? You check in with your people. You check in to see um, if they're comfortable in their group member role still, or if they've had a life changing experience or they've got something going on in their lives that have changed their commitment level. Um, you show that vulnerability. You change the process if the process isn't working. So maybe you've chosen a decision making process and it's just not working for the team. You go back to the drawing board and you do it again. So formative is evaluation during the process. So you can do that, right? In the adjourning stage, it's too late to formative, formative evaluate anything, but you can definitely summative. So summative is just like you think it is. It's at the end of a project where you do an evaluation at the end. So looking at it big picture wise, did we do X, Y, Z? If you remember back to some of our other lectures, it talked about how important it was to set those evaluation criteria a priori so before you get to the end so that you do have this great system to say hey we decided this is how we're going to evaluate ourselves now can you change that sure but if you already have that in place it's going to make it so much easier to complete that evaluation looking at group member roles so if you're utilizing that personality typology strengths whatever you're using in that forming set section of the team development process going back to say was their growth did we just stick to our prescribed roles did we change roles did we change roles based on what the team needed do we think next time our team roles would be the same looking at behaviors as well so <laughs> when you're doing the evaluation, how are tasks performed? Was it a part of that, again, group member role? 
did we do something a specific way and it could have been better? It could have been different. Maybe technology has come out since, you know, because things are coming on the market all the time. Maybe a new marketing tool came out. Can you imagine if you were in the marketing business uh, pre-TikTok, right? And then TikTok hits and you're like, everything that we've done, we've got to make it to where it's TikTok accessible, right? Because that's honestly the best marketing, um, just about the best marketing you can get with, with some generations. And so it's that idea of performing. Um, how can we do it better next time? And then did we hit our measurable outcome results? And so when we talk about evaluation in terms of grants and stuff, like logic models are really big and it's about defining those outcomes, defining those smaller goals in order to get to our bigger goal. Did we hit those metrices? Now, an after action review is a little different than an evaluation because it's more of a formalized evaluation because an AAR usually goes to the higher ups, whoever those higher ups may be. So an after action review is this, we've met this ob objective, this is how we met this objective. We did not meet this objective. This is why we did not meet this objective. This is what we would do differently next time. And even if you hit all your objectives and you do the things and everybody walks out of this team project still loving each other, you still need to do that um, that document because it will help the next team. Um, it is a great way to say, hey, here are, the, here are the things that we learned. Here are the things you should know before you take on this same project or you do something similar. So it's kind of a, a really great roadmap. If you remember back to the lecture that I talked about my trip to Georgia to teach uh, leadership to high school kids and with that team, we did create an after action review document that we gave to our department head and also the associate dean at Georgia at the time and the dean dean at the, at the time. Um, and we sat and met with them and did an actual after action review report. It was a really great experience for the undergrads to be able to present to you know higher level administrators, but it was really interesting. And, the things that we chose as a team to put into the after action review to help the next team. So yes, we talked about our struggles with not knowing that the high school kids had to take smoke breaks. <laughs> and so, you know, that's something weird you would think to present to an administrator. Hey, we were not globally competent enough to know that our 14 year olds would be smoking. And so we had to completely change our, our, uh, lesson plans based on how much time we would have for things. But we did, right? We we told them this was something that we did were just so far out of our realm. And there were other things that we included to uh, as well that you would think, oh my gosh. I remember one girl, really, Heather was her name, she was fantastic. She said, Dr. Jen, I really think that we need to put in there to prepare the next team that there are several places that we're going to go that only have Turkish toilets. And I said, okay, well, that's a little weird to put in an after action review. She said, yeah, but if someone else goes, if they continue this project, they need to know <laughs> that there's not um, American toilets. There are Turkish toilets, which if you don't know, is basically a porcelain hole in the ground. And so I was like, okay, Heather, I get it. Like those are things that if we would have known, we could have prepared differently. So I get that. That's part of an act for after action review. I just thought it was really funny. When you're in that adjourning phase, you've got to recognize contributions. Words of affirmation may not be your love language, but all of us as humans, there is some part of us that wants recognition for our hard work. And for some people, I mean, it manifests in different ways, right? But we want to be recognized, so do it, and we don't do it enough. So when we think about this, expectations have a way of becoming self-fulfilling prophecies. That's the Pygmalion effect when we talk about it from a leadership lens. And so when they meet expectations or exceed expectations, right? Set those expectations high. They're gonna hit them, they're gonna be higher. And people are 
motivated when they have a challenging goal and receive feedback on their process. So McClellan says this um, in his motivation theory. Also Herzberg um, says it in his motivation theory. I mean, you can throw Maslow in there too. There's lots of motivation theories that say, um, if you give your person a challenging goal and they are receiving feedback, that evaluation piece, either formatively or summatively, they're going to then continue that higher level motivation. And recognizing the contributions of everybody, everybody, no matter how big or small the contribution is. Now, don't read this as everybody gets a trophy. That's not what I mean by this. But if it is a true team, then everybody in that team should be recognized for their, their contribution. So whether it is they are the queen of details and got everyone's schedule together, and that was their main contribution, celebrate it, right? Because it's one of their strengths. Now, if you've got a social loafer, don't worry about celebrating them, right? You don't have to do that, but functioning members of the team, celebrate them. And I like this idea, spontaneous unexpected rewards are usually more meaningful than formalized. I mean, formalized are important. If you come to my office, I have an I Love Me wall that has like my teaching awards on it, right? Because that is important. Um, but just little things. I remember doing a presentation um, for a group of people here on campus, and it wasn't a paid presentation. I just volunteered. Hey, you guys are, they, they were actually having some trouble on their team. So I went in to kind of do a little, some team building activities and stuff. And I just did it because I respected the people on the team and I wanted to help them out. And one of them sent me just a thank you note and a gift card to Starbucks. And it was $5 gift card, but it meant so much to me because it just kind of came out of the blue because she sent it like two weeks later. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's so nice. So things like that can really make a big impact. It can help with that motivation. So if you see someone who's struggling, uh, if you're doing a formative type of evaluation, you see someone struggling through the process, then find something they've done well, celebrate them in some way, and that will help with their motivation. So things that you can do, um, personal recognition, make sure that you personalize it, right? Sending, now this person knows that I love coffee. Now I'm more of a Dutch Bros person than a Starbucks person, but I love a good cup of coffee. Actually, I love a good chai tea. Um, and so she knew this about me. So that's why that, that gift card was so awesome. Now, if she had sent me a gift card to, I don't know, let's say like Cold Stone Creamery, that wouldn't have meant as much because I don't like their ice cream. <laughs> I'm such a brat, right? I'm like, I like Bluebell. I don't like Cold Stone. Or, you know, bringing in donuts in the morning for people. Well, not everyone eats donuts in the morning. I love a good donut hole, but I can't eat it until like 10 o'clock because it's just too sweet for my tummy, right? So you've got it. If you know your people, if you've formed enough, then you can actually personalize that recognition to where it's not a, oh yeah, you were standing in line at Target and grabbed a gift card. Great. You know, that type of situation. Use a variety of rewards. Again, we talked about money is not a motivator. Um, gift cards, small things. Um, even going to getting something like super cheap and chintzy sometimes is even a fun motivator. I remember one time uh, being on the board of directors for an organization and actually, you know what? It was Dr. Boyd. I am pretty sure he was the president. I'm pretty sure he's the one that did this. And we were in, oh goodness, somewhere where lighthouses were big. So somewhere in the Northeast, maybe Providence, maybe we're in Rhode Island. And he gave us all these small little lighthouses made out of porcelain, um, you know, and he later told me, he's like, I just went to one of those like crappy beach stores and grabbed some things that I thought were kind of fun. And it was just that little thing that didn't cost a lot of money to him, but it meant a lot to us, right? So think about, be creative, think about other things. Again, that idea of being thoughtful. If you know someone's a reader, then maybe get them um, a a subscription to Apple Books. You can do gift cards for that or half price books or something. Um, again, with that, make it personal. Being creative. Um, I keep talking about gift cards and that's not really creative. 
<laughs> Although all of my, my my children have always said, no, really, give us a gift card. That way we can buy what we want. And I used to get offended by that. But now I'm like, no, 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 I get it. Um, it's cool. Uh, but be creative. Think think outside that proverbial box. Um, and it's always better if it is public. Um, it means a lot to do it privately, but it means so much more to many people if you're recognized publicly. Now, I will say there's a caveat to this. You can't overdo it. You can't do it so much that it loses its panache, I guess. Um, I had a department head one time that read Jim Collins' Good to Great book. And if you've read that, one of the things that he says is getting the right people on the right bus, going the right direction. That's how you take an organization from good to great. And it's funny because I went to a, a speech by Jim Collins and he was like, I hate that that's the one thing people get from my book, which I thought was really funny. But anyways, this person um, would give out buses at meetings. Oh, here, here's a bus. Thanks for being the right person on the right seat on the right bus helping us move forward. Well, when it was one bus, like that was cool. Like if you got the bus, you knew you were doing something right. But then one bus turned into two buses. And then it turned into three buses. And then I think by the time the thing was over, there was like seven or eight buses. So at the beginning of the meeting, we spent the first 15 minutes, people giving buses and telling why. And it got to be, you know, because people were getting buses all the time, so it lost its charm. Um, but people were like, hey, you helped me with the copy machine when it jammed. Here's a bus. I mean, it just completely lost it. So you have to make sure that you also do the right amount. You can't over-celebrate. There's one more thing I was going to tell you guys. Dad brought it. It came to me while I was talking and I should have written it down. Hmm. Oh, when you celebrate, it could be a party. It could also be just getting together for one last thing. It could be some recognition at the end of your AAR, whatever you do to do it, but just make sure you have something that is a culminating activity. Um, I remember a virtual team telling me one time that they did a virtual happy hour together and that was their celebration and um, because they were in all different parts of the world. So the, what they did to celebrate was they brought their favorite drink and then they gave the recipe of their favorite drink to everyone in the team. Um, I thought that was kind of fun. You could do it with cookies or, or something if you were live. Um, but moving forward, right? Your last project, the project for this class is putting together a resource guide, putting together ways to do it. Now, your, your journey section, when you think about tangible things, it could be just brainstorming ideas of how to celebrate people. It could be an outline for an AAR. Um, it, it could be going back and utilizing some of the things that you've used and then evaluating some of those processes. Um, so don't get too wrapped up in the weeds about, you know, what does this have to look like? That's my my suggestion to you because it's going to be personal to everyone that your team portfolio, your team development plan is going to be different for everybody. Some of you have contacted me and said, Hey, I'm in the middle of a team issue, like a team project. Can I use this? And I'm like, yes, do it, create it, develop it, use it. That's the reason I want this last culminating project to be useful that you can take it, pick it up, move it, use it the next time you're in a team. As always, if you have any questions, let me know. And thank you so much for accompanying me on this journey.